Whenever a nation goes to war, you need to justify it to your people from beginning to end, and also afterwards, otherwise it would appear your countrymen died for no reason. This is especially the case for World War II. If you were to question if it was a war worth fighting, or even suggesting that the reason it happened isn't in line with the mainstream narrative, you'd be hounded out of the mainstream circles and called a Nazi. This is the case across the board from Washington to Moscow. In these two nations, you could argue they came out better off after the war, and most would buy that the sacrifice, especially in America's case, was worth it. But neither Russia nor the USA began the war, Great Britain did. When they inserted themselves into the German-Polish Danzig negotiations, any war that broke out would now no longer be a contained conflict, it would be a world war. In the UK, we're taught that this was the good war. We had no choice but to involve ourselves. Some of the most famous historians even claim that we destroyed ourselves to stop the evil empires of Germany and Japan, and that this was a good thing. In rare cases, it's even claimed that we had to fight to stop the Holocaust, which holds no basis in fact. At the end of the day, this is all cope. The Second World War cost Great Britain everything it had. We didn't do this as some courageous act to save the world. We did it because we were led by headless chickens, panicking their way through diplomacy, like Chamberlain, and warmongers who just wanted to get headlong into a fight, no matter the cost, like Churchill. When you are going to send your nation to war, and risk the lives of your armed forces, and especially your citizens, you need to consider the risks. Much like a gambler or a trader in the stock market, you need to assess the fact that before you dive headlong into what you're planning on doing, there are risks. Are those risks worth it? What do you have to gain? Before we dive in, I'd just like to mention that I've put my Telegram, which has become pretty active, down below. I've created a Patreon and put that in the description if that's of interest to you. Anything helps, and it will help me work towards being able to make more and better quality videos. And eventually, I'd like to focus purely on making these videos as opposed to my other jobs. But for now, this will help me afford the books required to make this kind of content and get the two or three videos a week I currently do out for you on time. Even the $2 tier on Patreon helps. This question was not the thought process in Parliament in 1939 when we threw ourselves into war. There was nothing to gain. Eastern Europe was not our sphere of influence, or even our business to be poking our nose in. A not insignificant amount of people in England even fought Hitler's goals in Poland were just. Danzig was a German city, after all. But through a mixture of lack of critical thinking, falling for false alarms and panic, we threw ourselves in. Worst of all, we knew we could do nothing if it came to war. Poland was an entire continent away, and no men, no bullets, or even advisors were sent to Poland. We'd given Poland free reign to provoke a conflict by not negotiating with Germany, yet we could do nothing to help. There was nothing to gain from such a move. We had put the nail in the coffin of Polish-German negotiations as the Poles knew we would back them up. What were the war goals? Destroy Germany? Anyone who fought for more than a second knew this would be either near impossible, or if it were to succeed, would cost many more lives in the First World War if outside help didn't come to France or Britain's aid. Britain's economy wasn't in the greatest state, and neither was her empire. Wars are expensive, and we'd bankrupted ourselves many times before going into ventures like these, but this was to be the greatest of them all. Hitler had explicitly stated that there was nothing in the West that interested him. He'd written off the losses in the Great War to Belgium, Denmark, France, and Italy. He was only ever interested in regaining the German majority areas in Eastern Europe under foreign rulership, which he did. All that was left was Danzig. Why did we draw the line there? Why not focus on what you can control, not what you can't? We could have drawn a line west of Germany and said don't touch this, or else it's war, and Hitler would never have crossed it. That much is indisputable. Hitler wanted an alliance with Britain, not war. If Mein Kampf is to be believed, which most happily do, despite Hitler stating later that if he'd known he would become Chancellor, he never would have written the book, then the future you are looking at is Germany expanding into Eastern Europe and throwing themselves into an inevitable war with the Soviet Union. Why would we involve ourselves in such a crusade? Initially, Hitler had attempted to negotiate an alliance with Poland, which we thwarted by involving ourselves, but if we had not, and negotiations broke down, you're looking at the destruction of the Polish state, which is hardly new in history, but we were in no position to stop that if it is what Hitler wished to do. Then would be the Soviet war, which would see the two, as most people at the time would say, and still do now, evil nations in Europe going at it with each other, inevitably weakening each other, and costing them millions upon millions of dead. The world over, the Soviet Union was detested. Why involve ourselves? Let them destroy each other, if that's what they wished to do. By involving ourselves, we had brought about worse horrors than we sought to stop. In war, everything is escalated beyond its normal limit. The further a war progresses, and the more total it becomes, the more civilization breaks down. The more you push your enemy into desperation, the more drastic actions he will take to save himself. A German-Polish war would have been a quick affair, if it even came to war. Instead, we escalated the war and even brought new players into it. We dragged Norway into the war by violating their neutrality, sending their country into turmoil. Then when things went badly for us, and France fell as a result of the Norway escalation, Winston Churchill, the so-called greatest Britain of all time, went on a grovelling campaign at the feet of Roosevelt and Stalin, inevitably escalating the war. He sent letter after letter to Stalin begging him to join the war, sending him warnings that one day Hitler would attack him. Roosevelt was more than happy to rob Britain blind for the supplies we needed to fight such a war. Hitler gave us the option of peace, an almost white peace. We would lose nothing. Hitler had no interest in war with us. Instead, 
we chose escalation. Millions upon millions more would die as a result. If we admitted our fault and cut our losses there and then, France would have been restored to its full independence. Millions would not die in the Allies' bombing campaigns to come. Thousands of Brits would not perish in the Blitz. Millions of Americans would not be sent abroad into dire conditions to fight a foreign war. Most important to ourselves, the British Empire would not have collapsed, and the Americans would not have inherited most of it. Millions would die as a result of the civil wars and chaos that ensued in our rushed departure from our overseas holdings after the war. There was never anything to gain by throwing ourselves in, yet we did. The war fundamentally changed the world in every conceivable way. The Americans became the world's predominant superpower, but yet they were in deep isolation beforehand. The Soviet Union gained control of all of Eastern Europe, and the Brits, for their trouble, were left totally bankrupt and their place in the world destroyed forever. It's been a terminal decline ever since. The Empire wasn't in a good state after the mess that was the First World War. It barely survived. World War II would be the death blow. In 1942, Winston Churchill stated, I have not become the King's First Minister in order to preside over the liquidation of the British Empire. Yet to gain American support starting the year before, Winston Churchill sold off the British foreign investments and assets for pennies on the dollar. Roosevelt couldn't believe his luck. He hated the British Empire and everything it stood for. He spoke publicly and privately on this point dozens of times in his career, even joking about how he was sending the empire to its grave while he was ripping off the Brits. We sold off our empire to a man who hated us, to save it from a man who loved us and never threatened us. When the war came to an end, we simply could not afford to run what we had left. A slow process of decolonization began, and we lost in a few decades what we had spent centuries building, with nothing to show for it. We came up with all kinds of post-war cope about how independence was imminent anyway, and we were preparing these people for nationhood. In India's case, this might have had a bitter truth to it, but in regards to Africa and the rest, we weren't going anywhere anytime soon. To cover the sheer amount of death that resulted from our departure would require a video on each separate state and go outside the bounds of this channel, but the blood was on our hands. The initial reason for fighting the war was Danzig, and by extension, Poland. At the end of the war, Churchill quite literally handed Poland over to Stalin without a care in the world. Polish government in exile was backstabbed and the nation was handed over to Stalin's communist puppet regime. On top of that, he was given the rest of Eastern Europe. Churchill even signed these away on a document to Stalin directly. Only Greece managed to resist the communist wave sweeping over Eastern Europe, albeit with 150,000 dead for their trouble in a civil war. Britain was left so bankrupt by the end of the war that in the end, they never recovered. Britain is a shell of its former self today. From the predominant world power at the turn of the century, within a few decades, Britain had become a second-rate power entirely dependent on American aid. Churchill himself, for his trouble, was voted out of office. In 1956, Britain tried to overthrow the new Egyptian regime to regain their control of the Suez Canal. President Eisenhower threatened to sink the value of the pound if we didn't leave. Like a good puppy, we left. Britain may not have realised it at the time, but they had become an American vassal state, and have remained one to this day. We do not have control of our own foreign policy. For better or for worse, World War II has entirely shaped the state of the world today. It takes major events like that to make such rapid change. Any movement that is nationalistic is immediately labelled as being bad and just like Hitler. The nations of Europe have lost their identities. Any movement that is too socialistic is viewed as being full-blown communism, so now we live in the most hyper-individualistic culture that has ever existed as a result. It's a scramble to the top for one's own sake. No one cares about the wider society. As a result of anything but the status quo being viewed as extremism on the left or the right, we have sleepwalked into the most deranged state of being that has ever existed. Very few are happy. Hardly anyone disputes that World War II was worth fighting, yet most of these people hate the world we live in today, which was caused by that same war. Perhaps it is time for a rethink. Those on the left hate the capitalist society we have created, those on the far right agree with them. Religion has been shelved as it holds the opposite values of those that are controlling our culture wish to instill. We live in the cult of the individual, and as a result, birth rates have plummeted. How am I meant to get that promotion at work if I have all these kids to look after? Everyone charges forward in the rat race without thinking twice. Almost no one could afford a house or live a happy life, yet they continue to try to climb the ladder, kicking those below them in the head on their way up. We have opened the floodgates to immigration to make up the shortfall in births, and a growing number of people feel like aliens in their own nations. Western Europe and North America especially looks like a shell of its former self. Whatever those troops fought for on the Allied side, it certainly wasn't this. Maybe it was, but they didn't know. It's almost as if they were fighting in someone else's interests and not their own. Videos come out regularly of the last living veterans from this war, those with the ability to overcome the need to justify their own actions anyway, who are happy to admit that the world has gone to hell, as the most famous of these clips puts it. The average D-Day stormer's opinions would get you locked up and the key for in a way if you express them in Europe today. These same men died for this cause and they didn't even know it. They were lied to. Whoever really benefited from this war, I'll let you decide for yourselves. But as for the point of this video, all I can really say is that beyond a shadow of a doubt, the Second World War was not only not worth fighting, but it cost us our civilization and way of living. It's time to rethink how we view the Second World War. And then nowadays, 
I am so upset that the things we did and the things we fought for and the boys that died for it, it's all gone down the drain. Our country's gone to hell in a handbasket.